All right, so look, there's this strategy going around that a lot of other gurus teach in, in the land investing space. And for lack of better words, they say, go where the other investors are. Just follow the leader. Now, before I even go into the video, I just wanna ask you, like in your gut, <laughs> Does doing the same thing in the same places with the same templates as everybody else, in your gut, does that seem like the right strategy to growing your business? Oh my. anything like me <laughs> it does not feel like the right principle and hey look I've been through these programs I've I've gone through it and the truth is that those strategies that specific strategy used to work very very well before the internet became popular and the competition and the ability to to, to do this business skyrocketed before that yeah you could pretty much simply say hey go where the other like four land investors are and you're very likely not going to run into competition. These days, you know, mail houses, you can, you can send 5,000 letters with a couple clicks of your mouse. Back in the day, that looked like buying a big ass printer and printing 5,000 letters, stuffing them, stamping them, putting them in the mail. The game's changed. It's changed quite a bit. And the truth is, most investors are blending in with each other. Have you ever talked with a seller that you've sent a letter to and they've said something to the effect of, I have 10 letters like this just on my desk? Well, that's a result of the follow the leader mentality, right? And the truth is, if they do have, maybe it's not 10, maybe it's five, I find people tend to over-exaggerate, but even if it is five, what is the principle there that caused them to call you versus the other five? Well, it's luck. <laughs> For the most part, it's luck, right? If you're looking to build a business that creates serious cash flow and result impact in your life, is the guiding principle really gonna be luck, right? Luck that the right person calls you? Probably not. So I wanna give you three questions to ask yourself, and this is really how whenever I'm putting together a large marketing campaign to go out and find motivated sellers, these are the questions we ask ourselves internally within my business. This is how we help our clients figure out the right strategy for their business. Because the truth is, there's a lot of different ways you can get to the finish line in this niche. You can buy big properties that you flip for cash. You can buy medium and smaller properties that you sell on financing terms. You can do long closes, option periods, lease purchases. There's a million different tactics you can do and the truth is when you're just doing the follow the leader mentality, just doing what one person says, it may not be the right thing for your business. And so I don't think there's a one size fits all approach to figure out the best next mailing campaign or the best strategy to find motivated sellers. But there are some guiding principles and questions we can ask ourselves that help us figure out what's the right strategy for me? What kind of properties should I be targeting? And then from there, we can work backwards to figure out where we should go and find them. Question one, what is your skill set or ability? The truth is, I'm not going to advise that a newer investor, somebody who's done less than five or 10 deals, go start targeting properties where you're flipping them for 50, 100, $200,000. Because the truth is, it takes a lot more skill. It takes a lot more marketing and a lot more money on the front end to find those. And when you put those three things together with somebody who's new, <laughs> they fall through the cracks. And so the truth is, if you don't have the experience or skill set, start small. Because small deals, A, you can flip very quickly. You can find them, source them, sell them very fast. And it can give you that experience you need to feel confident. The second question, and it kind of goes into the first one I'm going to ask is, how are you going to fund the deal? Are you going to pay for it out of your own pocket? Are you going to try and source the deal and then connect it with a financing option? Are you gonna buy it and then sell the loan, right? There's all these different strategies. You can buy it and finance it yourself and get the monthly cash flow. There's a ton of different ways you can do this. And so it kind of goes back into question one. What's your skill set and ability? And how much in capital do you have, right? How much in capital do you have? It, are you gonna be able to fund these deals or do you need to go after deals that somebody else is gonna fund? Because the truth is those two deals require vastly different areas to go find properties. So again, back to the start, if you're just going where everyone else is, how do you know that that kind of property fits in with the strategy that you need to be employing in your business? You don't, right? 
And so there needs to be a much more analytical approach than simply just throwing the dart, following the leader. The third question that we ask ourselves and pretty simple, what are our financial goals? Whenever I do marketing campaigns, I do them quarterly. Helps me just keep track of things, track our finances better, see how our marketing spends performing. That's how I do it. It may not be how you do it, but you got to ask yourself, what are your financial goals, right? And you got to be practical, right? I love, I'm a big believer in positivity and optimism, but if you don't blend that with some practicality and you just started this business and you say, I want to make $20,000 a month or I want to make $300,000 in the next year, the truth is I'm going to have to stop you there. You're probably not, right? So set practical, but also big goals, right? But practical goals. So if you're a beginner, maybe you're looking to make twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 in the first year, or maybe you're looking to make 50 or 100. These are all reasonable. But somebody who's been doing this for two or three years like myself may be saying, hey, we're trying to do one and a half million dollars in sales over the next year. And so obviously those are two vastly different goals, right? And so they're going to require different strategy when you're going to find sellers. So the three questions we asked are, what's your skill set or ability, right? Got to be practical, got to know that. Two, how are you going to fund the deals? A big thing that many people overlook for some reason, it's the most important one. How are you going to fund the deals is number two. And number three, what are your financial goals, right? With those, let's work backwards from a couple of common examples. Let's go with the scaling investor. Uh, I say a lot of times this is a struggling investor. This is somebody who's hit a plateau in their business. Maybe they're doing two deals a month, three deals a month, whatever that looks like, but you're trying to get to the next level. All right, so let's work backwards on a main example I see with a lot of our clients, okay? Your skill set is growing. Maybe your business feels like it's plateauing a little bit. You're doing two deals a month, three deals a month. It's inconsistent, one deal, zero deals, whatever it looks like, okay? But you got the skill set, you got the experience. Part two, how are you going to fund the deal, right? This is question two. And this is where most people really veer. And this is where you really have to understand in order to have this, the right strategy, what turns into results from your marketing, right? Do you have money or do you not have money? It's a very simple question. If you got $10,000 in your account and you're trying to create $150,000 in revenue over the next year, I just gotta tell you, it's probably not gonna happen from my experience. It's likely not. If you're financing the deals yourself, but if you start to go after deals where other people are financing them, then you can quickly find enough deals to get you to that revenue point. On the flip end, if you have the money, if you work a W-2 job that gives you a lot of income, you have that money to invest at those really high return rates that we talk about, well, then that's going to be the best strategy. And then we're going to want to go after even different properties for that. So what I want to illustrate here is really there's no one size fits all strategy. But one of the most detrimental things you can do that will keep you in that struggling investor kind of bucket, if you will, where you feel like you're blending in, you feel like you're not getting enough deals, it's following this idea of that we're just following the leader. We're just going where everybody else is. Because the truth is when you do that, it's likely not the right strategy for your business. And then you waste your spend. You waste your marketing spend and you don't get results. And this puts you in this negative momentum spiral and really it keeps you stuck. It keeps you struggling. So look, if you keep employing the follow the leader, throw the dart approach, it's likely not right for your business. And this is something that I talk a ton about in our free Facebook group. Hey, if you're looking to start or scale, grow your land investing business, I hope you'll check us out. I go live every week with new original content that helps you grow your business. It's called Learn Land University. We'll have a link somewhere around this video or you can just find it on Facebook by typing it in. We have over a thousand like-minded land investors who are in the position of scaling and growing their land business. So it's a great place to network, great place to learn, and we hope to see you there. Hey, if you wanna follow us on any of our other accounts, we got Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, we got all of them. Uh, we put out a lot of content for investors. So, hey, we hope to see you there.